Hello, moths. Hello, moths. Humat Jola, this in its language, this stem badge has two possible shapes badge and badge. With badge occurring to the in the presence of a morpheme with an underlying tense vowel and badge elsewhere. It means that these are two uh, allomorphs, right? But they occur in different circumstances. They do not occur haphazardly. They have a certain places. When there is a tense vowel, one takes place. When there is a lax vowel, the other is used. As in the case of English language, when we use the sound as a plural, we use it in, a, uh, in the company of certain sounds. And when we use sir, we use it in the company of certain other sounds. So, unless they have some distributory facts, they are taken as two different forms or variation of the same morphemes because they do not. Uh, overlap with each other. In English, the plural makers, the plural maker comes in several shapes. Among them, sir as in lips, the as in balls, and as as in roses, n as in oxen, and null as in sheep. Zero morpheme. So alternation based purely on phonological context. We know that when to use sir, when to use the, and when to use us, right? Whereas na and uh, zero are or these lexical uh, additions. In the English data, only the first three elements of the plural suffix depends on phonological uh, context. The other are lexical. The last two as in oxen and sheep are lexical and of no concern here. We are, we are actually uh, uh, talking about those morphemes which have uh, a certain place uh, or which are the variation of a single morpheme and we call them allomorphs. Like the English plural suffix sir, the English past tense suffix has three morphemes, ter, the and ed. Or id. For example, we have da in blamed, ter in jumped, and ed in edit. We know that they have a certain logical distribution. When we uh, we know when to bring da and ter and ed. This distribution of the three allomorphs is predictable. We can easily once the rule is known easily put a certain uh, uh, allomorphs at a certain place as we have just discussed about the uh, other languages. We can formulate the distribution of the allomorphs in even simpler form. The English past tense suffix is de, but in the presence of certain sound it assimilates with them and becomes de or it. Where we find the, the da has assimilated to the preceding segments in voicing. We know that da become da become ta when we have voiceless ending sound like cha watched. We added ed and but we pronounce it ta. Shape uh, brush and brushed and many other words. Add if you look at add it has an addition. Uh, sometimes it's pronounced a or sometimes shua a sound. It has been added by an automatic phonological rule of epenthesis. Epenthesis is the insertion of a phonological element within the sound. So that is triggered by the fact that the final segment in the verb and the suffix itself agree in both places and continuously. It means that, for example, in started, Start the uh, the ending sound of the stem t and the uh, second consonant and the consonant of the uh, of the alum morph, plural morpheme d 
has to agree to bring a an a sound or a sound in between them to uh, so that's why they they are a, a regular feature in in the language but however da is the basic form or the or the basic allomorph of the english past tense suffix not the t or ad it is not always easy or even possible to determine the basic form of a morpheme however it is a difficult phenomena to do so we must decide which form of a morpheme best accounts for the full range of data i mean before saying that whether t or d is the basic form we have to look at the data we have to make a thorough uh, search there to determine or to predict which is the basic morpheme in this case let's look at some examples from the classical greek we have two words one is noun in nominative case another noun in genitive case so we see that uh, does it also have a basic form or not if you take this as an example ethiopus ethiopian and ethiopos often ethio ethiopian so if you can see that we have s for nominative case noun and os for a genitive case noun similarly we find felpis for which means vain in nominative case and falbos of a vein in genitive case so what we see here is that in the second example when the word took the genitive case it changed the per sound which was in the nominative case changed from per to b now the question is whether flap is the stamp of the nominative or flap of genitive it means that do they have two uh, stems or one stem so we come across certain problems like this when we analyze morphemes and their stems etc epenthesis as, as i just said is a process that is very normal the insertion of a sound or letter within a word the b in thimble similarly if you see film a lot of people would pronounce this film they would add an a sound into it so this process is a very common process as we just saw in case of uh, this allomorph so this process generally take place uh, in phonology uh, when one sound is added into the uh, into the into a phoneme and this takes place at a lot of time as we see that in english uh, past tense an a sound is added especially when we have an ed allomorph of the stem or the basic allomorph d so this is a common phenomena in certain cases it's very easy to predict what are the variants of a morpheme or allomorphs and sometimes it's difficult to predict